So I had this dream probably when I was in in high school in about 2004, 2005. I remember that Half-Life 2 had just come out. And in Half-Life 2, there's a character called the G-Man who is this um, alien human hybrid overlord, you know, um, puppet, puppet master sort of a character. You know, he seems to be in control of your fate, watching from afar. Um, and there's an, actually there's another character who was in the game who, if the G-Man is like the puppet master, you know, the the next character, this this like a mayor of City 17 is like the puppet leader He's that's being controlled. Um, and and in actual fact, the more I think about it, um, it was it was this guy, this this mayor of City 17, because he's uh, that was more relevant in my dream to the story of the dream. Because um, in Half-Life 2, you're walking around in this city and there's loudspeakers everywhere. And the loudspeakers um, have this mayor's um, voice, you know, kind of reassuring all the citizens that uh, every, you know, life is normal or whatever, you know what I mean? It's, it's propaganda, okay? So, um, played that, loved that, I was really into it at the time, and then some um, undefined time later, I had I had this dream. And I in, in this dream, um, again, it was very, very abstract. So, I, I remember... Um, I remember basically being on a conveyor belt in this dream, and this conveyor belt is moving through some giant, you know, factory setting, and I was frozen in the dream. That was probably the first thing that was quite uh, was quite um, was a little bit distressing and, and, and stood out because you know usually when I have a dream, I have I have I'm aware of of what I'm doing. I'm doing stuff, you know. I'm, going somewhere or I'm doing something in this dream I couldn't do anything I, I was physically kind of frozen in in one spot so that uh, and I was aware of that as well so that was um, a little bit spooky and so I'm on this conveyor belt I can't remember if there's other people on the conveyor belt if there are other things on the conveyor belt but I wasn't alone and um, I and I, I if, if I think about it it kind of reminds me of um, in cloud Atlas there's, you know, there's one storyline that happens in um, Neo Soul where, you know, this female character, she's a, 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 a robot and she gets to, you know, there's one, at one point she kind of looks through the, the looking glass sort of thing and she sees this factory where all the robots are built and destroyed and recycled and so on. And, and this, that actually, when I watched that many years later, it reminded me that that's kind of what the dream was like. So I'm, in, I'm on this conveyor belt and I, I can't do anything and I'm just basically stuck in one spot and I'm just... Move, being moved along in this factory and there's this voice you know voice of god um you know telling me that uh i've been chosen my, my that that I, you know i've been basically i was being sacrificed for some greater good um so it was and that that, that was actually kind of the the whole dream because now for the rest of the dream I'm moving through this conveyor belt and I start to feel my anxiety rising because I don't have a good feeling about this I uh, the, the, the voice of God this this um, actually sounding he sounded a little bit kind of calm but slightly malevolent sort of a voice um, telling me that I was about to die I was about to be you know sacrificed for something I don't know I can't remember what but um so I just feel this this sense of dread rising, and then at a certain point in the dream, you know, this it's kind of it's a bit video gamey because there's like there's those ba massive stompers, chomper things. You know, you're playing a video game, you have to time as so you run under a thing, and the things going up and down. <laughs> so it was very video gamey in the dream, but you know, for me in the dream, it was quite scary. And but and I'm frozen. So essentially, the dream kind of led up to me seeing my doom and eventually being eaten up or squashed or somehow annihilated in the dream. And the reason I remember this dream is because that point of being killed in the dream wasn't the end of the dream. Um, I remember being squashed, destroyed, whatever, killed, and being aware of just this void, this, uh, this emptiness, this, um, it was just all black, and I, w w I was aware, but so in the dream, you know, when I'm on that conveyor belt, I'm conscious, I'm lucid, I'm, I'm aware in the dream, and I'm aware that I cannot move. So once I was 
killed the level of awareness reduced a, 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 a fraction I suppose you know I I, I, I was aware that I was dead I, I could I, I was aware that in the dream I could see nothing but blackness um, but I didn't have any agency to begin with and I, I had even less now and that feeling was um, was very scary it was scarier than any nightmare that I'd ever had and, and have had since it was um, just pure emptiness and it reminds me of uh, the film Into the Void uh, and, and that the way that that film kind of deals with the post-life experience of being a, a detached viewer of events that you no longer know if they, they're real or if they're imagined. You, you don't know if your consciousness has expanded or contracted. You just, you're now completely detached from your own mind and you're observing your own mind. And, and in, in this dream was a little bit like that. Maybe it's, it's also similar, I guess, in meditation practices, you know, when you, you've been, you know, when you can kind of separate yourself a little bit. So, yeah, that was, I guess, when I was, in, I was, I was a teenager and, um, yeah, just that's kind of st stuck with me ever since because I've never had a dream since that's like that where I've experienced that emptiness. And I'm, I'm glad that I, I haven't because I think, you know, as, as you get a little older, these things change as well and um, probably, I dare say, to be scarier if I had that dream now, you know? So... Yeah, that was um, that was probably the most purest death dream I've ever had.